Hello traders, this is Jerome Anglona. In this week's Market Watch, I uh, will be taking a look at a few trades that we had uh, this previous week, and then we'll take a look at a few trades we're looking into this coming week. So, <clears throat> this previous week, um, GBP JPY has given us a phenomenal uh, time in the markets as far as trading opportunities. Um, what I identified was the fact that, one, we were in consolidation. Okay. So you can see that the market was definitely not showing any uh, commitment to a direction as far as uh, lower lows, lower highs, higher lows, higher highs, to show us a nice direction. I mean, it's pretty choppy. You know, we got uh, what looks like going into a downtrend here and then reversing. And then by the time we uh, initiate an uptrend, we come back into this consolidation point, spike up, consolidate, drop down. So just real choppy. But the benefit of choppy markets is we start to see um, patterns appear. So identified that this swing right here, I started up here, and we got a 382 retracement, okay? And then I said, well, if we get something like a 1272 or a 1618, we may have a cipher pattern, right? So cipher patterns would look like this. And boom, we got the cipher pattern. Uh, excuse the ad from trading view. So that was our first trade right here. Uh, let's get my arrow. We took this trade down and we took profits off, or actually our positioning off at uh, this support level here. Uh, looking left, you'll see these uh, points of structure here. Right there. Right there, and even right there, got a little bit right there. So there was, you know, a few points in the market where I just said, you know, this is where we take our profits. But on top of that, if I get rid of all this, you saw another little, little trading opportunity while this market was uh, going our way. One was we had this double bottom. Okay, so we had the market push down. All right, push lower, lower high, lower low. Okay, where did that push into? We look left. Nice little uh, support, which is now resistance. And then the market gives us a double bottom. And we're not going to go over the rules as far as double bottoms go. Uh, we can host that in a, another more private training. Um, but our traders definitely know what a double bottom is here. And then the market pushed up, nice strong push up into previous uh, resistance levels here, and then a retrace. And on that retrace, every time we have a double bottom, uh, I definitely look for that 2618 trade. And we get the market pullback, a couple pin bars here, kangaroo tails, dojis, whatever you want to call them. And that was our indication, boom. Confluence with structure, all right? What was once resistance is now violated, should become support. And you can see it had three hits, one, two, three. Okay. So I identified this part. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get to take in a tight entry, but um, 
Let's see, our entry was right about here, right before this huge shot up. So we definitely uh, got to take advantage at least of this right there. I'll mark that in blue. So we got, um, so we took this trade down from a cipher pattern, excuse this. And then with the 2618 trade, we took this trade up, right? And then following this analysis, let me get rid of all this stuff. This one. And then after this analysis, we noticed that after that huge spike up, we got a, a hit to this previous resistance level, and then a pull back down, and then we got a lower high, lower high close, right, and then a pull back down into structure again, and we got this push up on this candle. So let me make this candle a little bit here. Nice blue candle right there. And when I saw that, I saw a little bit of indecision. I said the market may push back down. Uh, we are overall in a downtrend. So we had a little structure trade for us. All right, nice little pennant pattern here. And I mentioned if we get a break to either side uh, that we would get into the market. And we got the break to the downside. And we got to catch uh, some pips going down as well. So that was pretty awesome. And then not only that, um, if we compress our bar and wolves, there's actually a, um, a bigger pattern forming here. Right here. Right. We had a very nice garlic pattern. Okay, um, our entry, although, wasn't until that break here. So, you know, garlic pattern with a pendant pattern and a break, uh, definitely a very nice, um, very nice buy or sell opportunity right there. So, <clears throat> that was just a few trades that we took um, this week in our trading group. Uh, for traders worldwide. Uh, so for looking forward, um, as far as GJ goes, uh, you know, um, maybe a, a test of support here and then a bounce up, uh, but I'm not, I'm not going to confirm that with anything. Uh, what I did notice was if we go to the dollar CAD, um, we have a little bit of, of, of a structure trade here. So uh, what I mean by structure trade is, uh, you know, if you understand market direction uh, of what consists of a trend, um, we're not gonna we're not gonna go through all that in detail for uh, a market watch. But if you are interested in getting a little bit more in depth training of what consists in a trend. Uh, you know, how to trade the consolidations, just like what I just previously showed you, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Feel free to, to email me. Um, I'll leave a link below in the description. And we can definitely um, have you on board. So here's what I identified. All right, let me finish this. A couple more lines here. Boom. All right. Here we are. Perfect. So we obviously know that this market is in a downtrend. Um, as of right here, we did have a small little garlic pattern. Um, I did not trade it, but just, you know, learning to identify this stuff kind of gives you a little bit of an edge uh, so that way you can properly analyze 
this market. But what we also have is a nice little support and resistance here. Change my colors here to gray. So you notice every time the market <clears throat> creates a bottom, creates a top, creates a new lower low, new lower high, but where it pushed up into correlates, right, with structure. Again, new lower low, new lower high, correlates with structure. Okay? And then the market does a harmonic pattern, pushes down, make new lows and low high, lower highs, right? Pulls up, where did it pull up into? Look left, boom. Then I made a, a new support level here, all right? And then we see the market climb back up. And if you mark the very, you know, these smaller movements, this is an hourly chart, but if you mark the smaller movements, then yeah, you will see the little small correlation here with these levels. But I'm more interested in the overall move. So what do we have here? Uh, one, you can, you can almost say that we have a cipher pattern, uh, but if the ratios do not match, then we do not, do not have a cipher pattern. And we can see that the 382 was not touched. So we need at least that 382 pullback on this uh, initial swing here. So with the, with the market breaking upwards, make, uh, making a higher high, so we're looking for that, you know, this, as of this point, this market's in consolidation. But what I did notice is that we have hit previous structure uh, resistance. So that to me, correlating with, let me make these candles a little bigger, correlating with uh, lots, of, lots of pins to the, to the high side, showing some indecision. Uh, we got the kangaroo tails, we got, you know, dojis, we got um, this huge rejection candle. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a rejection candle, but it does uh, it does pin to this resistance zone and then pull right back and, and close down here. So, you know, lots of indication that says, hey, uh, I may be possibly reversing. And I took note of that and I saw... All right, we have these levels down here, all right, of resistance, support, then obviously our support down here. Okay, and you can almost make the case, since we do have a couple touches of this being another, another level of support. So how does this benefit us? Well, one, I called uh, a cell right about here after that kangaroo tail. And you'll see that, if I get this here, putting our stops above previous high and having at least uh, a, a first target down here at the first level of this support, right? What was once resistance should be support. Uh, this would be our first target. Um, and that gives us a nice one-to-one, -one, which is uh, awesome. We are in profit. Uh, and we held this trade over the weekend looking to hit our targets. And if we get that one-to-one, -one, um, stops roll to break even. And we're, we will aim for the uh, next couple targets, which is basically uh, the structure points here. Support there and support there. So we'll see how this trade goes as soon as the market opens here. Uh, today, it is Sunday. And finally, the other trade that we were looking at, another structure trade, um, we can see that the market is doing some sort of a pennant pattern up here, right? And then we get a little break. From that break, market pushes down, creates a lower high, creates a lower low, and a lower high. Now what's interesting, let me zoom in here, is we get a doji, right? We get a bearish move here. Um, you could almost make the case if that's a evening star. Uh, I'm not 
going to confirm that as an evening star. But what I did notice is we are in a structure zone, the nice little key level, right? You see them. Sorry about that. You see the market push down. You know, it, it was kind of choppy in here, but it did create a lower high and then break down and creates a lower low. So we are in this downtrend, right? So this would be a continu trend continuation trade. Um, we did pull back into previous structure, right? And we're, we got a rejection candle, a couple bearish moves. Uh, so, you know, for me, having a little bit of confluence here, we do have a hit on the 618. And I'm definitely looking for this market to push down. So the next question is, how far may this push down? Well, uh, for trend continuation trades, I love the Fibonacci. So definitely getting uh, in this reversal zone that I like uh, in between the 3A2 and the 618. I definitely look for this market to extend um, to the uh, 1272 uh, for targets here. Let me, uh, here we go. So we actually got in after this the bearish candle here after the uh, doji. So stops would roll up, or would go above the previous high, and we'd look for that one-to-one -one target. Uh, right at support, we get a just just slightly under one-to-one. -one. I mean, it's like a, I mean, look at this here, it's like a 92%. So, you know, we'll get a, we'll get almost just about one-to-one, -one, which is fine, uh, but we are definitely aiming for that one two seven two extension, which gives us a little under a one-and-a-half to one. So, you know, Definitely, uh, definitely some good odds here. Uh, with proper risk management, this trade should play out very nicely. All right. So these are the two trades that we are a part of, um, and we're just looking for those to play out. Uh, and then we can also go to some pairs to watch out for. Now. You know, I, I noticed we had some trades with UJ uh, this past week as well, but I'm not going to go through them. But what I will say or will mention is uh, one of our traders posted a chart uh, just this morning, right, with the, with the chart markup. Oh, where'd it go? You know, he posted a chart. Uh, he's he's definitely learning this stuff that I'm trying to teach him. And, you know, he was asking how did uh, UJ look according to his charts. And I loved his chart markup. So I'm going to go over it. Now, I always teach our traders that the very first thing you should do is at least do something like this where you're marking uh, the swings, right? Or the movements, I should say. Not necessarily the swings, but the movements. You definitely want to try to catch the overall move, but there's nothing wrong with marking each individual swing because then at least you'll, you'll have a better understanding of what the market's trying to do here. So... Here we go. So I'm just going to mark each <clears throat> each push, not necessarily a swing, but each push, just to uh, kind of show you what's going on here. So we are obviously in a, a bearish market downtrend, and what you can see is if I change my color here, let's do this. Is we had some patterns that allowed us to get in the market. Uh, so something like this with a little pendant, break to the downside, and then we did get a um, Gartley, which uh, we did trade, right? And then, so we got this push down, and we hit, we hit support, Right, so we do have a support level here. 
And we do have this, I did call this out uh, earlier this week where this breakdown, I wanted a pushback into previous structure support, which should be resistance, and we did get that. So uh, we had a nice little run here. And then the market puts in uh, this little structure here. So right in this in between here and this uh, A to B leg right here. So the B right here on this garlic pattern, uh, definitely put in a nice structure uh, resistance here for this market. So now we're kind of ranging down here, right? But what, what's really interesting is the fact that we are actually putting in another pendant pattern. Okay, we got to break a structure, uh, you know, break to the downside out of this uh, consolidation pattern here, harmonic pattern. And now we have this breaker structure, uh, pendant pattern, and we're definitely looking for a break. Now, as far as bias, I definitely would like a break to the downside, considering that we have a lot more room to work with. So, you know, when, when you guys are developing your biases as far as, uh, you know, support and resistance, pattern breakouts, or whatever, definitely want, want to accommodate <clears throat> for the room movement, right? This is where your risk comes in. So I'd rather risk this much and aim for this as profit rather than risk this much and aim for this as profit. So uh, market open, uh, depending if we get a break or not, I definitely would like the break to the downside. Okay, and it'll give us just just under a just under a one to one. Of course, I'd be aiming for that one, so I'd, I'd be looking for this market to make lower lows. Right, so that's something to watch out for. Um, you know, if you want to trade a breakout here. Uh, otherwise, if you do get a breakout, depending on what direction, what you can do is one of these where the market breaks out, retrace back into structure, right? Respect this as support. Sorry, you guys, that trading view just definitely started putting a lot more ads. Might have to switch to a pro account. And then uh, have this be our indication to enter a buy. Okay, so there's definitely something like that that can go on. Um, or if you want to wait for the breakout on the downside, uh, something you can wait for is basically the same, the same movements, but going to the downside, you would be waiting for a retrace back into structure resistance, right? And supports violated, it will become resistance and vice versa. And that would give us a nice entry, a higher probable entry for um, hopping in this market to the downside. All right. Let's see what the euro has since we're talking about the yen. Now, the euro is definitely in an interesting uh, position in the market. We're definitely in an uptrend here on the hourly chart. And we have definitely put in a nice little uh, structure. So you notice, market pushes up, and we get this uh, almost uh, near sideways pullback, and then a break to the upside, and now we got this retracement back in. So noticing that this market is in this little retracement, we're testing this as support, you can see it's been riding this level for multiple hours. So I could actually see that this market potentially hold and then give us a nice little pop to the upside okay and then you would put your stop loss uh, below a previous low so probably somewhere around here and you would aim for that one-to-one -one. Um, or if you want to use a Fibonacci extension so you'd be looking for something like a one two seven two Look at that. 
right almost there uh, as far as this pullback goes <clears throat> probably at 3a2 yep. so we definitely got a little 3a2 action going on in here uh, if this structure holds <clears throat> even if it pushes down a little further here guys even if it pushes down to the 618 oops get rid of that here even if it pushes down to the 618 i mean that just gives us a better uh risk to reward right so our risk would be this much our reward obviously one to one would be right about here and then we'd get our two to one which is still the one two seven two so something to watch out for for that for the euro um let's check out AUD USD. Uh, so AUD USD has has been a phenomenal market um, these past couple weeks. And here's what I noticed about this market: we had this pattern first, or first of all, I should actually go to the daily because I did uh, analyze. A huge, 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 huge Gartley. So I'm going to make this red. All right, so huge Gartley pattern. Um, definitely in confluence with all ratios. Okay, and we did get the 786. It, it, it entered our kill zone completely. Rejection, da daily rejection candles. This market on a longer time frame is going down so going into our trading time frame uh we definitely had some consolidation going on uh as far as this market goes but at the same time what happens in consolidation we get a ton of patterns we always get patterns in consolidation so you know, when you mark your support and resistance, you know, if you, if you don't really know how to trade uh, harmonic patterns, what you can do is just mark all the uh, support and resistance zones, and you'll kind of start to see an overall direction, right? Because technically, uh, structure are based off of uh, support and resistance. It, it's highly based off it. But you will see these little minor levels, right? Minor levels to keep in mind. So that's all the, as far as uh, support and resistance goes. That's kind of all the levels I was looking at. But again, I've identified the Gartley, or I'm sorry, Cypher. And then on top of that, um, we had where is it? I believe. Oops. Sorry, guys. Ah. Not that. Oh, right there. Sorry. I'm like, where am I? So we got this push down. And then I actually identified this as another garley, a bullish garley going up. Uh, the problem was we had our stops hit, right? But what we did was we were like, okay, we, we see that it's holding as uh, support, okay? So we look left, right? And we notice that, you know, this market definitely hit a nice support zone here. So as of here, you can you can make the argument that this is in a pullback, right? So it'd be a counter trend trade here. Uh, we definitely bought this push up a little bit, um, and we're looking at this as a counter trend trade. So our first target was a as a three eight two, second target uh, six one eight, and if you notice, let me get rid of this. This was a failed pattern here. I was looking at. 
But if you notice, go back to structure, uh, the 618 definitely ties in with structure very cleanly, and the, the 382 as well. So definitely some, oops, some areas to consider uh, in this move up. So if you're not in this buy going up, you can wait for these, uh, these points here. So, you know, if you can even make the case that you won't hop in this market, let's use this color, until price reaches somewhere in this zone. And then we can look for a, uh, again, a 1272 extension. So this is this is just an option, guys. This is just one option here. You know, overall, it's in a in a um, in a downtrend as as far as or not necessarily a downtrend, but we're in consolidation in a, on a daily chart. But I did identify the Gartley on the daily. So what we're doing is we're trading the little moves in between. So for here, this market pushing up. You know, will it turn? Will it continue its downtrend? Uh, it's a possibility, you know. Um, we're definitely biased on the downside, just because of the higher time frame uh, pattern. But what you can see here, what you can notice, is if I delete everything, actually, you can see another. You can see a direction because even though this has been kind of choppy waters lately, you could notice that. Every single high that's formed has been getting lower. Okay. Minus this little hiccup. But that was for this pattern here. But you can see that each high is getting lower. So for that, having you know lower highs having overall lower lows, right? And this market is pushing down gradually. Ooh, sorry, once again. <clears throat> so for me, obviously my bias is towards the downside. Now, does that mean we won't have any pushes up? Of course not, the market moves in waves. So we can trade both directions still, right? As in any market. But my overall bias will be down. <clears throat> so we may be in a counter trend. Uh, the fact that the euro is, I, my bias for the euro is to push up. Um, the AUD USD should push up as well. And that's, that's why we're having this movement here. Okay. If you understand a little bit of correlation, I got that posted right there. A little bit of correlation, you'll notice that certain markets move in similar fashion. So NZD, again, like the Euro, uh, going in an uptrend, uh, definitely looking for this market to push up. Uh, we do have this resistance level here, so we'll see uh, how this works. You know, no, no bias yet as far as, you know, where to get in, where to get out. Um, I'm just watching these markets for now. The only markets I'm really uh, looking to trade, it would be like uh, the Euro USD, um, the, uh, the GBP JPY, right? That's what we identified here. Or not the GP, sorry, the USD JPY is what we were looking at. Yeah, so definitely looking for that. Uh, looking to see how our USD CAD trade and our USD CHF trade will play out. Um, so that's definitely what I'm looking for this week. You know, I'm, I'm looking for a more stronger indication as far as where the market may go. Uh, the Euro USD may give us a buying opportunity as soon as market opens. Um, but all the other markets that I look at <clears throat> in my portfolio, uh, AUD USD and the NZD USD, not not really giving me clear signs. You know, I mean, I could track the market, I could draw out all the support and resistance, but until we get into these levels, until I get some structure going on, 
um, you know, maybe maybe hitting resistance and then looking to sell or, you know, some type of pullback or, you know, breakout. That's what I'll be looking for. So as of right now, I'll be sitting on my hands for NZD USD, AUD USD, uh, GBP, JPY. And, uh, well, we haven't checked out the euro, actually. Euro JPY. 